the 30th of January, 1933, Germany. Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, is appointed Chancellor of Germany and aims to lead the German master race to victory in the racial struggle against those deemed as inferior peoples, especially the Jews. The first concentration camp, Dachau, is established less than two months after Hitler becomes the Chancellor. Between 1933 and 1945, Nazi Germany and its European allies will establish more than 44,000 camps and other incarceration sites including ghettos. The perpetrators will use these locations for forced labor, detention of people deemed to be enemies of the state, and the mass murder of millions. One such camp becomes Jasenovac, which is established by the authorities of the independent state of Croatia and operated by the governing Ustasha regime, Europe's only Nazi collaborationist regime that operates its own extermination camps. One of Yasenovac's guards becomes a young woman who, for her brutality, will become known as the Hyena of Death. Her name is Maya Bujdon. Maya Bujdon was born on the 15th of August 1923 in the village of Praputnyak, then part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Her mother Božica died of tuberculosis in April 1930, and Maya and her two brothers were raised by their maternal grandmother. The family lived in severe poverty, and Maya, who was described as an extremely quiet and withdrawn child, only finished a four-year regional elementary school. She then worked as a seamstress in Zagreb, and after the outbreak of the Second World War and the German conquest of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in April 1941, she joined the Ustasha movement. As Germany and its Axis allies invaded and dismembered Yugoslavia, the Germans and the Italians endorsed the proclamation of the so-called independent state of Croatia by the fanatically nationalist, fascist, separatist, and terrorist Ustasha organization on the 10th of April 1941. After seizing power in Yugoslavia, the Ustasha authorities erected numerous concentration camps in Croatia between 1941 and 1945. These camps were used to isolate and murder Jews, Serbs, Roma, and other non-Catholic minorities, as well as Croatian political and religious opponents of the regime. The largest of these centers was the Jasenovac complex. After having joined the Ustasha movement in October 1942, Maya Bujdon was assigned to work in the Stara Gradishka, which was one of five detention facilities of the Jasenovac camp complex, established between August 1941 and February 1942 by the authorities of the so-called Independent State of Croatia. Since the summer of 1941, Stara Gradishka had been an independent holding center for political prisoners, and in the winter of 1942, it was converted into a concentration camp for women. Stara Gradishka, as well as other Jasenovac camps, were guarded by Croatian political police and personnel of the Ustasha militia, which was the paramilitary organization of the Ustasha movement. Conditions in the Jasenovac camps were horrendous. Prisoners received minimal food. Shelter and sanitary facilities were totally inadequate. Worse still, the guards cruelly tortured, terrorized, and murdered prisoners at will. Jasenovac contributed to the Nazi final solution to the Jewish question, the killing of Roma people and the elimination of political opponents. But its most significant purpose for the Ustasha was as a means to achieve the destruction of the Serbs inside the independent state of Croatia. The Croat authorities murdered between 320 and 340,000 ethnic Serb residents of Croatia and Bosnia during the period of Ustasha rule. More than 30,000 Croatian Jews were killed either in Croatia or at Auschwitz-Birkenau, which was located in German-occupied Poland. To slaughter the Serb inmates at Jasonovac, the Ustasha invented a knife that became known as the Serbosiek, meaning Serb cutter. The living conditions in the camp evidence the severity typical of Nazi death camps, a meager diet, deplorable accommodation, and the cruel treatment by the Ustasha guards. As in many camps, conditions would be improved temporarily during visits by delegations such as the press delegation that visited in February 1942, and a Red Cross delegation in June 1944, and reverted after the delegation left. At Stara Gradishka, Bujdon was ready to commit the most serious crimes, which was the reason for her rapid advancement. She became the commander of the entire women's section of the camp, 
and was the only female person from the Ustasha movement in such a high position within their concentration camp system. Former prisoners described her as physically pretty but cruel. Bujdorn behaved like a real soldier, always wore boots and had a revolver with her. She verbally abused, tortured, and killed concentration camp inmates, mostly women, children, and the elderly. She let the dogs on them and would beat them with batons and sticks. She would throw the women and children into solitary confinement without food and a bed on a bare floor. There, they died of hunger and disease. Bujdon would become one of the most hated and feared guards in the camp, and she owed her infamous nickname, the Hyena of Death, to her cruelty and brutality. On one occasion, she tortured a little girl so much that she died as a result of the fear and torment she endured. The child's mother, who was forced to witness her daughter's torture, lost her mind, and for several days she was left with a body of her dead daughter. Then she was suffocated. On another occasion, Bujdon smashed an infant against a wall and killed the child on the spot. In her testimony after the war, the former inmate Rosika Sinko described the following. Once I saw the Ustasha member Maya order an exhausted comrade to get up. When the woman was too weak and lacked the strength to get up, she strangled her with her hands. Bujdon also participated in the mass murders committed in the night, during which 2,000 victims were slaughtered and suffocated. She frequently got drunk and saw the killings as a competition against her male counterparts. Whoever killed the most people was respected and accepted in the circle of murderers. The Ustasha guards even had contests over who could kill the largest number of prisoners. When on the night of the 29th of August, 1942, prison guards made bets among themselves as to who could slaughter the largest number of inmates, one of the guards, Peter Brzitsa, boasted that he had cut the throats of about 1,360 new arrivals. The individual and mass murders united the Ustasha into a community, and the consumption of alcohol was a part of their killing ritual. Probably under the influence of alcohol, in the Christmas of 1942, Bouchton selected and killed seven particularly pretty young women. At the end of the war, Maya Bujdon did not retreat towards Austria, but hid together with her husband, Mirko Slishkovich Slomic. They met at Jasenovac, where Slomic, also a member of the Ustasha, belonged to the camp's personnel. However, one of the former prisoners of the Jasenovac camp recognized them, and the two were arrested and brought before the court. Because participating in mass murder was something they took for granted, they did not deny their crimes, but confessed to the murders and other atrocities, just like all the other male and female concentration camp guards who had served at Yasenovats. In May 1945, Maya Bujdon gave the following account of her activities as the commander of the women's section in the Staragradishka camp. I was also involved in mass murders, just like all other functionaries in the camp mentioned. I can't remember all of the crimes I committed in detail, but the one I remember the most is my first murder, which I committed on an unknown old woman in the fort of the Staragradishka camp. I carried it out by throwing the old woman on the ground and shooting her with a bullet in her temple. On the 26th of May, 1945, the military court in Zagreb found Maya Bujdon guilty of committing war crimes and crimes against the civilian population and sentenced her to death. Bujdon was 21 years old when she was executed by firing squad in Zagreb on the 28th of May, 1945. Her husband was executed the same day. There were no tears shed for Maya Bujdon. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.